Jason Lilly from the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. Today I'm going to be talking about cover cropping and developing your cover crop management strategy. Cover cropping is an important practice for increasing your soil health and overall farm productivity. When planning your cover crop management strategy, there are several factors to consider before planting. The first is to decide what goals you're hoping to achieve from planting a cover crop. Some of those goals include increasing soil organic matter, soil aggregation, and general soil physical characteristics. You can also add fertility through cover cropping. This is by planting legumes or green manures. You can prevent erosion with cover crops. You can also suppress weeds or suppress soil-borne pathogens. Cover crops are also a great way to increase beneficial insect habitat and food sources. After deciding which goals are most important to you, prioritize those goals. You'll be able to use that for selecting which cover crop species you want to plant. Next, consider what time of year you'll be able to plant a cover crop and for how long. So you want to look at what crops will be planted before the cover crop and after the cover crop. This is important when looking at pest concerns and crop rotation. For example, some brassica cover crops host the same insect pests and diseases as brassica cash crops, so you'd want to avoid that situation. You also want to look at how the residue from the cash crop or the cover crop will impact the, the next crop. For example, having a heavy biomass may negatively impact field preparation, uh, seeding operations, or field fertility. Another consideration with timing is to look at what the weather is like at the time of year that you'll be planting your cover crop. So if you plan to plant during really warm and dry spells, uh, you may have decreased germination and increased competition from weeds. Use the resource crop rotation for, for organic farms to develop rotation plans, including where cover crops might fit into a long-term rotation. So the third step in developing your cover crop management plan is looking at the equipment that you've got available to you to manage that cover crop. So that includes looking at the equipment that you have available to you for planting the cover crop. Especially on large plantings, a uh, grain drill is really the ideal tool for doing that. The grain drill uh, is easy to calibrate, so you can figure out uh, and put the precise amount of seed out into the field. This is important so that uh, you have enough seed in the field that you can outcompete the weeds, but so that you aren't putting too much seed uh, and, and wasting costs. So most grain drills include a calibration chart uh, so that you can easily calibrate depending on what type of seed you're putting out. Uh, the grain drill also uh, puts the seed in the soil and buries it so you get good seed to soil contact. Drop spreaders like this and broadcasters can also be used for spreading seed on the soil surface. When using these type of implements for, plant, for spreading cover crop seed, it's important to use a cultipacker or a light tillage implement to incorporate that seed into the soil. This carrows have also been used to incorporate that seed. Another consideration is to look at the equipment that you have for terminating your cover crop. This is particularly important. At the time of year when the crop is mature, ask yourself if you'll have time to kill the cover crop before it sets seed and becomes a weed problem itself. Ask yourself, do you have a heavy enough mower to deal with large amounts of biomass? Do you have a disc harrow or a plow to incorporate those large amounts of biomass? If not, you may want to stick with lighter cover crops like a clover, an annual ryegrass, or a buckwheat. Crops like sorghum sudangrass, winter rye, or alfalfa may need heavier equipment and take several passes over the field to incorporate that high amount of residue. The next step is to look at your decided goals, your timing considerations, and the equipment that you have available to you to help you to select which species of cover crops to plant. The Vegetable Cover Crop Decision Tool by the Midwest Cover Crop Council aids with comparing multiple criteria for species selection. 
You may also want to talk to other growers in the region to find out what has and hasn't worked well for them. For more information and resources about cover cropping, visit your local University of Maine Cooperative Extension office or visit our website. Happy planting!